All right, let's be honest. Trying to find a gunpowder to reloading whatever caliber can get really stupid really quick. Let's talk about that today. How to pick the perfect gunpowder or the right gunpowder for the load you're trying to develop in the caliber and cartridge and rifle. It's trying to work out. Let's simplify it as much as we can. <laughs> Let's see if we can cinch some eyebrows. Yay! It burns a little different when you do it with a full gallon or a full pound. Don't try this at home! Okay, talk with me real quick today. Let's talk about gunpowder. If you reload, if you're just starting out at reloading or if you've done it for a while, then you become pretty aware pretty quickly that reloading components uh, the options out there are plentiful, sometimes dauntingly so. There are dozens and dozens of powders on the burn rate chart. Now, the burn rate chart, the burn rates of powders go from slow to fast, or fast to slow, however you want to look at it. Fast, slow, fast, slow. The basics. Fast burning powders are for smaller cartridges and like pistols and stuff like that. Slower burning powders are for larger cartridges and big honking donkey bullets and and you know like magnums and stuff like that. That's in a nutshell because science. I don't know. There's several different scientific principles between between or behind burn rates and case capacity, bullet size, bore diameter, all those things. It's 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 a whole it's a whole thing. And I, I'm not going to pretend that I understand all of the science exactly behind it and the differences in you know, all the different powders out there and why spherical or semi-spherical or flattened pancake spherical versus extruded versus cut extruded versus long cut, short cut, all those things. There's so many differences, it's overwhelming sometimes. The easiest thing to do though when picking your powder, and you see in the intro there, those powders that I have on hand are basically just the powders I have for about five different calibers. That's it. All of those powders, for five different calibers. It really shouldn't be that difficult, but it is. There's a lot of options out there. You have dozens and dozens of powders. You have hundreds and hundreds of bullet options and 180 something calibers out there, something like that, 188 something, I don't know, calibers and cartridges between rifle, pistol, or rifle, maybe just rifle. I don't even know, I haven't looked it up in a while, but there's a lot. What that equates to is you have literally thousands, thousands, of combinations you can make for any given caliber. Pick a 308. Thousands of combinations between the powders, the primers, the bullets, and the brass. You can literally make different tunes and recipes of ammo to the thousands and probably never run out of options of what you want to try. All right, so you don't need to go into the weeds when you first start reloading or whatever, or when you're going to be reloading, you've been doing it for a long time. What I try to do, and what I'm doing right now with the 7 PRC as I'm working up loads, is I try to pick the most practical, functional use case parameters for that cartridge, okay? So my 7 PRC, it's going to be a long range, heavy game hunting cartridge. And secondarily, something to just goof off with, so target just for long range, just for the fun of it. But it is a long range hunting caliber pre predominantly. So what am I gonna be looking for? I'm going to be looking for more temperature stable powders. So powders that are more temperature stable so far as fluctuations in the atmospheric temperature wherever you're at in your environment. So from extreme cold, negative 30 degrees to extreme heat, you know, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit plus. Um, powder itself can burn at vastly different rates depending on the powder type and formulation of the powder itself you can get vastly different velocities if it's not a temperature stable powder since this is going to be a hunting load for me 7 prc and most of my other loads i do as well i look for the most temperature stable powder i can get some like the stable hd line from winchester are geared specifically for that but temperature stable powder also have some drawbacks and they're kind of hard to quantify in <sighs> in relation to extruded powders that are maybe a little more temp temperature s sensitive, like, let me think of like 4064. 
uh, old school powder, IMR464. It's kind of a temperature sensitive powder in, in, in some ways compared to something like this. That doesn't mean there's wild fluctuations, it just more so it's temperature, temperature stable. But you may get more consistent velocities out of it than something like this with, which I think this stuff actually has nitroglycerin in it. Or nitrogen, no, something like that. It's pretty cool. Gunpowder's pretty cool. I mean, if you, you know, end up with a lot of cans of this stuff that you're not gonna use, you can always just, you know, light them on fire in a safe environment, go outside, pour powder, pour the powder on the ground, don't do it in a con enclosed container, and light it on fire and see what happens. It's really cool. Back to um, powders. Specific context of use. Hunting powders for hunting loads, I like to lean more towards this temperature stable side, even if I'm not gonna get quite as high of velocities, or maybe not quite as perfectly stable of extreme spreads and standard deviations, um, the powder itself is more stable velocity wise overall, okay? And when you're hunting, you're going from extreme conditions pretty much constantly, whether it's cold to hot or hot to cold, getting in and out of your truck, getting in and out of your vehicle, and your gun and your ammo are coming with you. So you need something that can kind of withstand those fluctuations better, okay? Leaning over to the more, the less temperature stable sides, but maybe more consistent powders when it comes to velocities, extreme spreads, and high velocity, um, those are great for match type of things. You know, you can, you can make up match loads and then you can kind of test those match loads at different temperatures with that powder to know what kind of fluctuations you're going to get in your velocities. And then you can calculate that for most, with most ballistic calculators. So the temperature sensitive versus temperature insensitive powders or regular powders, smokeless powder we're talking about, debate is almost moot because you can actually track with the ballistic software we have today and stuff like that. You can track in the great chronographs we have out there, all those things. You can track all those variables and factors and put them into your calculations and kind of compensate for any drawbacks in your powder. So getting caught up in that, um, some people like like the temperature or the ball powders, they meter better, so they come out of a powder measure better, like they just more consistent out of a powder measure. So you're gonna get more consistency anyway out of that dude. Um, whereas your extruded and long grain powders are not quite as good at coming out of a powder drop, you may have to trickle them or hand drop them. So it's kind of a pain in the neck. So Either way you go, you can get great results with just about any powder out there. You really can for calibers. And this is the point I'm gonna make with this whole video is that for most calibers, you don't need to overthink your powder selection. I would take, personally, this is what I do now, I take a cross section looking at the powder chart and the reloading data and get your reloading data from like Berger, Nosler, Hornady, um, Hodgden, uh, definitely on there, Bidavori, stuff like that. Most companies have powder um, load data out there for most of the common calibers. So what you can do is take a cross section of the powders you see being used in those load data, and I would pick two. I would pick two, caliber, two powders for any caliber cartridge in that burn rate window. So each cartridge kind of has a burn rate window where it needs to be in between these powders here and here. And it can range from 10 to 20 powders for some cartridges, like 308, you can load with the variability of bullets from 110s down to up to 185s and stuff, or 220s even, you can, you, can, you can load almost, I would say probably 30 different powders or 40 different powders in just the 308 alone um, you can use. So I would pick your rifle and cartridge and caliber, your bullets, what type and size of bullets are you shooting, okay? because it's going to vary the powder that powder chart that pendulum swings depending on the bullet for any different cartridge so pick the bullets you're going to be using for the application you're going to be using find that window on the burn rate chart and then look at a cross section of all the different um, powders being used by the different load developers out there um, for their for their actual powder you know um, their uh, reloading data for that caliber and then pick two i would pick two i would pick a spherical and I would pick a extruded and I would test those and I would test loads in those with the bullets like pick two powders two bullets you know what I mean you can get by with most calibers you can get by with two calibers two bullets that's all you need or two powders sorry two powders two bullets one for hunting one for match match being varmint target etc etc cheap you know whatever whatever if whatever you want to call your match or cheap or target or varmint load pick a bullet for that um, you're going to have to find bullets that work well in your twist rate and your barrel and caliber and stuff like that. The easiest way to do that is to buy the cheapest factory ammo you can with the most variability and, and the most varied grain weights you can find. 
one box of each and just test your rifle first with that and see what your rifle behaves like with different types of bullets, different grain weights, and different speeds. Okay, so that's an easy way to narrow down, like just with, with the investment of a few boxes of bullets, a few boxes of factory loaded ammunition for your caliber or cartridge, you can kind of narrow down what your gun likes, okay? And then base your data for reloading off of that. My gun likes X or seemed to perform well with X. So I'm gonna find a bullet that I like that compensates or you know compares to that for both hunting and match. And then I'm gonna pick two powders. And I'm just gonna try those two powders. I'm gonna try a few different loads of those. And I wouldn't make a huge investment in those powders, get you a couple cans of it, right? But instead of trying to find, you know, I see a lot of reloading videos on YouTube. There's such great information out there and there's such great reloading um, channels out there. They, but these guys go through, you know, sometimes dozens of powders or at least quite a few handful of powders for one caliber, trying to get it to shoot well when, or just trying it out just to see what you can get out of different powders. And you'll end up chasing your tail doing that um, by just going through the list of powders constantly. Oh, I'm gonna try this powder. I'm gonna try this powder. I'm gonna try this powder. If you have a big catalog built up of different powders for any caliber you're shooting, it can be useful when you when there's scarcity, okay? That's when you might need to broaden out and branch out into different powders. But if, you, if it's available right now, I'd say in two different types of powder, an extruded or a you know, shortcut extruded whatever, and a ball powder, I would grab just two for your rifle, for your load that you're trying to develop, and pick yourself two, maybe three bullets you really like for this gun and you feel will work well or you like for your application specifically. If you're a Nozzle fan, pick Nozzle. If you're a Sierra fan, pick Sierra. If you're a Hornady fan, pick, pick Hornady. If you're a Burger fan, pick Burger. If you like all, you know, Federal, uh, see uh, Spear and Barnes and all those things, pick some, just pick some. Pick two, don't, don't go crazy. Pick yourself two bullets, pick yourself two powders, start throwing some weights up and down the weight chart, like you're up and down the load chart. You can do a lot of development there. Um, that would be the first. For me, when it comes to reloading and load development, charge weights. Charge weights is the number one factor that you mess with. Um, secondarily, seating depth. 99.9% .9 of ammo that I load and have loaded for the last 20, almost 25 years, I have loaded everything to magazine length, Sammy spec. Just gonna put that out there. I almost never chase seating depths because it's ridiculous because your throat erodes with every shot. So you'd be constantly having to move your shots, your bullets, one, two thousandths at a time. With every 10 to 20 bullets, you're gonna have to move your, move your load depth. You're not gonna do that on a firing range. You're not gonna do that while you're out and about. Don't chase the seating depths too much. Some bullets are very obvious, like VLDs, um, burger bullets and stuff like that. They're very sensitive to seating jump. So, but you don't need to chase it too far. Just find the little sweet spot where it works well and you can get some subminute groups. And most of the time that the actual seating depth is not your accuracy problem. It can be, it can be the problem, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's powder and charge weight. That's your biggest indicator of velocities, accuracies, extreme spreads, all those things. This is the gas. This is the gas in the vehicle. This is what fuels the hot rod. You know what I'm saying? The tires can make a little bit of difference. Your primer can make a little bit of difference. What well, company primer, but for the most part, you'd never know the difference. For the most part. I'm not talking bench rest. I'm not talking, you know, there's normal shooters, there's match shooters, there's hunters, and then there's like bench rest and F-class type of stuff. That's a whole different animal. Those guys have a whole different process and program for building loads and developments and why they need the specificity that they do at such extreme distances with because they're i mean we're talking the difference in a win and a loss can be an eighth of an inch or less sometimes um at, at those extreme distances so that that's a different animal i'm talking just general reloading for the hunter shooter and precision game guy like prs type of stuff you really do not need to go that far in the weeds if you have a good rifle good caliber capable you know, reloading practices or even buying factory ammo, you can win a match. You can shoot an animal, you can hit targets at long range. So you don't need to get too in the weeds with that kind of stuff. Your brass makes a difference. That's another factor. Um, your reloading processes and practices for cleanliness and, and concentricity and uniformity all make a difference. But the biggest factor in reloading is the bullet and the powder. That's the gas, man. That's the fuel. That's what that's what gets you down there. You know, that's 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 everything. The bullet and the powder. So I would say pick two, and start from there. If you just don't get the results you want 
from the two powders you picked, then maybe throw a third powder in there if you really like a bullet, like Sierra Match Kings. Um, I love Sierra Match Kings for my, uh, they're, they're my target bullets. They're my plinking bullets, my long range bullets, my varmint bullets, my all the above bullets. Um, Hornady ELDs, same thing. I really love them for target plinking, long range practice and uh, varmint, stuff like that. I will stick with those two bullets. Usually when I get a, cal a new, new cartridge or a new rifle set up, I, I, I go with these two bullets. I like this grain weight, I like this grain weight. This is my goals with it. And I'll lean more towards the heavier side myself anyway for any given caliber. Get some Hornadies, get some Sierras, play with them. Play with two different powders. If I just can't figure out a combo that works, I'll keep the bullets and get some new powder then. Try something else. Does that make sense? Hope I'm making sense with all this. But I think we complicate the powder thing too much and there's so much out there for options. I would say to you, just kind of streamline your process. Pick two powders, pick two bullets, shoot. Load and shoot. Load and shoot. And then do it some more. And then load and shoot some more. And if you just can't get the results you want, for whatever reason you want them, then maybe start playing with your powder a little bit. And your bullet. You know, maybe try a different bullet. But this can get really stupid really quick with how much powder there is out there. So I would say simplify it. If you have any comments about this subject and you have more experience reloading than I do, which is a lot of people out there, been doing this for decades. I've talked to people that have been doing it close to 100 years now, according to them. But anyway, in all seriousness, leave your comments down below, leave your experiences down below, leave your thoughts down below, like, subscribe, share, and y'all get out there and do some shooting, do some reloading, if you got the setup for it, and just enjoy it. Be blessed. Have a great weekend.